Is a big move coming down the line for the Philadelphia Eagles with training camp officially underway? We're talking about that here on the show. This is Philadelphia Eagles Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Appreciate all of you for being here with us. Howie Roseman the other day making an interesting statement when asked about the Eagles roster moves. Quote, we're never going to close the door on an opportunity to improve our football team. We're going to dive further into that. First, though, make sure you subscribe to the show. We are 40 people away from 47,000 subscribers. And if you're looking for a year-round Eagles content, let this be your home. Today's show is sponsored by Kanzuri. You can get 15% off at Kanzuri.com slash chat. Now, a lot of you watching right now might say, Chase, I like my shoes. Why should I get Kanzuri, though? Well, have you ever wished that you were a little bit taller or you're just looking for stylish shoes? As you can see on your screen right here, Kanzuri has you covered. Maybe you even matched on Tinder, but her profile says must be over six feet tall. Maybe your date wants to wear heels, but she can't because it'll make her taller than you. Well, we have the short kings covered with today's sponsor, Kanzuri. They make shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, girls get heels, makeup, push-up bras. Why can't men get a confidence boost as well? Kanzuri shoes, not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but instead fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. We have a great deal for our viewers and listeners. For limited time only, you can get 15% off your order at Kanzuri.com slash chat. The site is already 30% off, and with our link, you get an extra 15% off. That's 45% off your entire order at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com slash chat. So let's go back to that quote from Howie Roseman here that we started off the show with. We're never going to close the door on an opportunity to improve our football team. That's what Howie Roseman had to say when asked about the linebacking unit and some moves that they could make down the road to improve and bolster the roster a little bit. Now, we know that Howie Roseman is an uber-aggressive general manager who goes to sleep thinking about ways to improve his football team. He wakes up trying to comb through ways in which he can bulk up this roster. Here's that full quote from the best general manager in football here. We've got a lot of young players at that position. We're excited to see those guys, evaluate them on a daily basis, and again, like anything, we'll keep our options open. We're never going to close the door on an opportunity to improve our team, so we'll consistently be looking at that position in every position when it comes down to it at the end of the day. And I love the aggressiveness for Howie. I love the passion that he has for always thinking of ways to address weaknesses or flaws on this unit. Roseman is known for being aggressive for us as Eagles fans, but also for all other teams in the NFL, as well as his willingness to stack up talent on the squad. And you look at how he uses his money and the financial resources. You first look at the offensive spending. All offense, the Eagles, they might have some premier players on that side of the ball. They still rank 25th among all teams. That's smart allocation of financial resources with a total amount of money on the offensive side of the football totaling $99 million. Jalen Hurts and this quarterback room, they rank 24th. They're spending this year in 2023 under $10 million at the most important position in football, taking advantage of Jalen Hurts being on that rookie contract. Offensive line, that's an area where they do invest because you have to open up lanes for running backs and protect the quarterback. They rank 10th. Running back, though, it's an expendable, replaceable position. Howie Roseman sees it as such. 23rd in the NFL. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, one of the best wide receiving duos in the NFL, 22nd in team spending at that position, and then at tight end, 17th. Then you look at defensive spending for Philadelphia here. The entire defense, 26th. Defensive line, a lot of resources invested there. Still 17th, middle of the pack. Linebacker, 31st for the purpose of this conversation. Cornerback, 8th. And then safety, 32nd. We know that Howie hasn't put a lot of money toward linebacker in his years as general manager, as well as safety here. But this gives you hope that the Eagles moving forward with Roseman at the helm, he's become better at evaluating talent. They're going to be in a really good spot, 
even with Jalen Hurts signing that contract extension. To linebackers specifically, never really been a position that the Eagles have invested heavily in. But I'll tell you this, if N'Kobe Dean, Nicholas Morrow, they start to struggle a little bit, I think that Howie will make a move. Linebackers in the mix as of right now on the roster to make the 53. N'Kobe Dean, year two. Nicholas Morrow, year six. Christian Ellis, he's been popping so far throughout OTAs and the first day of training camp. He added another interception going into year three. Sean Bradley, shout out Temple U, fourth year. And then Davion Taylor, it's been a bust up to this point going into year three. The linebackers who left this squad in free agency that makes this a position of weakness, TJ Edwards, he went to the Chicago Bears. Kaiser White, he followed Jonathan Gannon to the Arizona Cardinals. We talk about the Eagles making trades. They could go cheap, and there are some decent names on the free agency market, guys with a lot of experience. Zach Cunningham, he's totaled more than 100 tackles so far uh, at moments, excuse me, in individual seasons throughout his NFL career. Quan Alexander, very well accomplished with San Francisco, New Orleans Saints, last played with the New York Jets, and then Deion Jones, mostly known for his time with the Atlanta Falcons. Those are free agent targets that maybe Howie Roseman has in mind, or there are two appealing trade targets that Howie Roseman could think about. And of course, popular names here on the show of Patrick Queen and Devin White. It really depends on how much and how heavily Howie wants to invest in that position. Both players, Queen, Devin White, a couple of months ago, they weren't happy with their situation. They still might not be happy with their current situations, but they did both report to training camp. And I do want to look at their numbers side by side because you think of Devin White as being one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Blitzing, he is. In coverage, he's awful. Here's how Queen and White compare. Both players have been extremely durable throughout their careers. Patrick Queen has never missed a game. He didn't last year. Neither did Devin White. 17 games apiece. They both eclipsed 100 tackles apiece, six pass breakups for Queen, five for White, five sacks for Queen, although he's a much better coverage linebacker, five and a half for White. You can use him blitzing the quarterback in this league. I think that he'd be able to have a lot of success there, five and a half sacks last year. Here's where it gets hairy, though. The Eagles need a good coverage linebacker. I think Nagobi Dean might be able to become that. Devin White was awful in coverage last year. Overall pro football focus grade of 45.5, whereas Queen was much better dropping back against the pass with a 70 grade. My overarching view on this, what I think the play is here for Philadelphia, you wait and see. You see if N'Kobe Dean and Nicholas Morrow can play. You see if Christian Ellis can be anything more than a UDFA training camp standout if the play actually translates to the actual field in between the lines. Howie doesn't want to put too much financial resources in that linebacking position unless he has to. So what do you think? Let's get the comment section going here, Bird Gang. What should the Eagles do at that linebacking spot? A for add or C for you think they're content. Now, Philadelphia, we have to include this in the conversation. As a team, as an organization, they do like N'Kobe Dean as a player. I like N'Kobe Dean as a player, and that's why I wouldn't panic. I wouldn't make a move right now because I do think Dean can be a solid player in this league. Roseman shares those same thoughts, and Dean was a player who was so good at Georgia en route to that national championship, and as he slipped to Philadelphia, the pick became, pick became too good to pass up on, right? And that's why Howie Roseman, I thought, got great value there. Him on Dean saying this, I think what we learned from N'Kobe was the same thing that we saw in college the same reason that made him such a highly recruited guy coming out of high school. The guy has tremendous passion, tremendous love for the game, tremendous work ethic. He was around the ball in every opportunity he had. The only problem with Dean going into this year, Eagles are Super Bowl contenders, yet he's very inexperienced. You have a new defensive play caller and coordinator in Sean Desai who's going to be relaying the calls to N'Kobe Dean. He's going to be wearing that green helmet and he barely played last year. Now, his numbers at Georgia in 2021 were really good. 72 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss. He was really good in coverage. He was good on some blitzes, as evidenced by the six 
blitzes there, some of those coming on some delayed blitzes where he was the disguise man in coverage. I thought he was really rangy. The early diagnosing skill certainly made up for what he lacks in size and speed. Two picks, though, and six pass breakups. Again, the issue is the lack of experience because he played in 3% of the overall defensive snaps last year. He got some action against the Dallas Cowboys, but that was about it. As for Morrow, the pro football focus grade wasn't good. He did miss all of 2021 because of injury after a stint with the Las Vegas Raiders. And while the PFF grade might not be good, he is a tackling machine. 116 tackles last year for a bad Bears defense. Two pass breakups, one interception. His mom, by the way, is sometimes in the comment section. So shout out to Morrow's mom for watching the show. We certainly appreciate that. Why these linebackers can be successful is because the Eagles' defensive line is really good. They're going to be able to generate pressure. They're going to be able to take up a lot of real estate up front, leaving some open opportunities where the linebackers don't have to fight through blocks to make some of those tackles. So once again, to round this out, I don't think the Eagles are going to make a move right now, but Howie Roseman, when he says this, this is obviously a position that he is going to continue to survey throughout training camp in the preseason. We've got a lot of young players at that position. We're excited to see those guys, evaluate them on a daily basis. And again, like anything, we'll keep our options open. We're never going to close the door on an opportunity to improve our football team. So we'll constantly be looking at that position in every single position. So let's round out today's segment with this. Your biggest concern with the birds is what? I'm going linebacker, safety, right guard. You let me know down in the comment section right now.